I have the starter project for the course open up here in Android Studio 3.2.1. The starter project has three packages, app, model, and view. The starter code is there to give us a head start on building out the CreatureMon app using MVP. If you've watched our MVVM course, you see that the starter project is essentially the same, with just some updates on dependency versions. The app package has an application subclass for the app and a file with extension functions for some Kotlin classes. The view package has activity, adapter, and other classes that make up the app UI. We'll talk about the view classes in a later video. In this video, we'll build out the classes in the model package. The starter project includes some code for persisting to a room database, which we'll do in a later video. I'll build and run the starter app now to get a sense of what we want the app to look like. The first screen will later be used to show the list of creatures that we've created. There's a menu option we'll later use to clear all creatures. Hitting the floating action button, we see the add creature screen, which is where we'll work for most of the course. You see that we can tap near the top of the screen to choose an avatar for the creature. We can assign a name to the creature, as well as intelligence, strength, and endurance attributes. There's a spot at the bottom to show the creature hit points value, based on the chosen attributes. And there's a button we'll use to save the new creature. We're going to build up the model classes we need for our creature data. The main class is Creature, which has a set of creature attributes and some other properties for each creature. As you'll see, one of the benefits of MVP and other architecture patterns is that we're able to isolate our model test to just include model classes. Back in Android Studio now, open up the Creature Attributes file. This is a simple data class with an int value for each of the three creature attributes. Next, open the Creature file to see the empty Creature class in the starter project. Let's convert this model class to a data class and add properties for the creature attributes, hit points, name, and also an int for the avatar drawable value. We're also going to need a class in our model to generate a creature based on the values input by the user on the Add Creature screen. In particular, we need to calculate the hit points value for a creature based on this formula. Hit points is equal to 5 times the intelligence attribute, plus 3 times the strength attribute, plus 4 times the endurance attribute. The CreatureMon game favors intelligence over all else. For the Creature Generator, we'll use Test Driven Development, or TDD, and write our test first for the class. If you've not done TDD before, just know that TDD is a test first approach where you perform a red green refactor cycle. Red means you first write a failing test, and then write the code that makes the test green by passing. You follow up with refactoring to make the code you've added as clean as possible. In the test package, create a new subpackage named model. Now add a new Kotlin file to the model package named Creature Generator Test. Create the test class and add a Creature Generator property to it. Creature Generator does not exist yet, so we'll see some compiler errors. We initialize Creature Generator in a setup method tagged with the addBefore JUnit annotation. Let's now go into the model package in the app and create the Creature Generator class to clear the compiler errors. Back in the test class, add the test for the hit point calculation. We first arrange the expected creature from the generator.
We use an intelligence value of 7, strength of 3, and endurance of 10. The resulting hit points from the hit point formula are 84, so we can create an expected creature that we give a name of Rikachu, a Ray Wenderlich version of Pikachu. We then perform the action we're testing on the generator, and assert that the result is equal to expected creature. In the Creature Generator class, create a shell of the Generate Creature method so that we can run the failing test. The creature constructor has default values for its properties. We can run the test class now and see the expected failure, since we've not yet added the hit points calculation. Next, we add the hit points calculation to creature generator and return the generated creature. Finally, we run our Creature Generator test again and see a green passing test. With our Creature Model class set up, in the next video, we'll start building out the repository in which we'll save the Creature data.